Watching this latest round of Antifa antics and their actions recently in Minneapolis at a Trump rally, it's clear that this is no longer, if it ever was, a group that seeks to work politically to achieve its aims, but it is in fact a fanatic organization that is filled with extremists whose ideological and dogmatic beliefs have more in common with religious zealotry and bigotry than anything else. Or put simply, this is no longer political, it is religious. With the recent radicalization of the adherence of social justice over the past few years, it's clear that this ideology has adopted aspects of the most pernicious forms of zealotry and bask in their own anti-intellectual, anti-reasoning, and anti-social demagoguery. The acolytes of woke not only disregard facts when they are inconvenient, but rain down violence upon those that pose questions that they cannot answer. Their creed is unchangeable as it is in their minds unassailable. There is utter conformity of thought and an extreme demand for ideological purity, so much so that purity spiraling and witch hunts of heretics within their midst is a regular occurrence within the circles of woke. None of this should come as any surprise to even the most casual observer of the human condition. I have already spoken about this in other videos and plan on making a dedicated video on just such a topic, but with the death of organized religion, something was bound to fill the void. Just as paganism was supplanted by Christianity in ancient Rome, it is becoming clear that in the West, at least, a kind of religious sentiment is being built around the notions of social justice, victimhood hierarchies, and hatred for all that are perceived as being contrary to this movement. There is nothing short of fanatical hatred within the social justice community and movement of the four olds. Old customs, old culture, old habits, and old ideas of the Western world. And it would seem that the irony is totally lost on your average rank-and-file fanatic that wants to attack anyone that stands against their comrades' march to a social justice-derived utopia just over the ideological rainbow. And where, pray tell, where have we seen this before, and where might it lead? Where have we seen mobs of people worked into a frenzy before? Tearing down monuments. Attacking their fellow citizens as not being pure enough in their ideology. Demanding total adherence to their dogma. Inverting and subverting entire nations and their people. Zealotry that does not care about facts or truth, but only about ideology. Witch hunts and public show trials to condemn the ideologically impure. China has been through it. While we are currently calling it a culture war, they called it their cultural revolution. And what is interesting is that these are roughly the same ideologies we're dealing with because history doesn't repeat, but it does rhyme. And given the rhyming nature of the goals of social justice with that of the communist cultural revolution in China, it is by no accident that the four olds, old customs, old culture, old habits, and old ideas are to be attacked and if at all possible destroyed. And it was these terms that were used between 1966 and 1977 in reference to the attempts of the communists in China 
to destroy elements of pre-communist Chinese culture and history. By almost universal agreement, the Cultural Revolution in China was a disaster for that country. And as always, it would seem that people cannot and fail to learn from the past, as the social justice mobs in Western countries clamor and hope for the removal of the Four Olds, the communists in China succeeded, and the repercussions of the wanton vandalism on Chinese people, on their history and their culture, can be felt to this day. At the core of Marxist thought, of communist thought as well, as with the resistance and woke thought today in America, it is the denigration, hostility, and really hatred for all things spiritual and, in particular, organized religion. As with communists in China, as well as the woke in Western nations, their religion is their ideology, and their ideological fanaticism is all that is needed. While in communist states, religion and spiritualism is to be stamped out, or at least the attempt is made, in the West, the collapse of organized religion continues apace. So, while it looks as though the destination of communist China and the aspirations of the resistance and the Church of Woke is the same, their paths and timetables to reach this ideological nirvana are obviously different. The creed of Woke, as with communism in China, has created an ideology where old social conventions are to be rejected, agreed upon morality is constrictive, and thus any and all attempts at restraint via morals and ethics is in their mind a form of violence. All previous social morality is to be jettisoned, all hierarchies removed, all restrictions based on old culture discarded, and what you're left with is nihilism and a moral compass with no direction in a society bereft of civic responsibilities. The end game of woke is the end game that has been reached in communist China and is best exemplified by what is now being referred to in that country as Generation Zen. Gen Zen is a term used to describe young people, mostly born after 1990, who, to the consternation of the Chinese Communist Party authorities, have little in the way of concern, not only for politics, communist or otherwise, but of much of anything else. In fact, Gen Zen in China has become so jaded that they can only heap scorn on their Western contemporaries when looking at their very public and in their mind, very socially pompous attitudes and platitudes. The term Baizuo, or white leftist, has become a term of scorn in China. While there have been a couple of articles written by Western authors desperate to distance Baizuo with their political leanings, I have spoken to personal friends in China and they have assured me that yes, Baizuo is a thing and yes, it does refer to the snowflakes among us. Now, I've even actually done an entire video on this, but a short definition from the Urban Dictionary describes the term Baizuo as being an epithet, meaning naive Western educated person who advocates for peace and equality only to satisfy their own feeling of moral superiority. The Chinese see the Baizuo as ignorant and arrogant Westerners who pity the rest of the world and think that they are some kind of saviors. If you want an example of a Baizuo, look no further than Canada's Prime Minister, Justin Trudeau. Having said that, Gen Zen, according to an article in The Telegraph, are sauntering through life in a passive and unpatriotic way, raising doubts about their loyalty to the Chinese Communist Party. They are defined as having a blasé attitude to jobs, politics, and pretty much anything else in life. They are, in the words of the author, simply indifferent. 
as well as a lack of political loyalty, a state-controlled newspaper called the Global Times added that there was concern that such attitudes could in fact hold Chinese society back in the long term. Some in Gen Zen would say that this assessment of them is a mischaracterization. As one 23-year-old woman said, we just don't want to have big ambitions. We don't want to be number one. We're happy with an average life, and we are, in fact, optimistic. Whatever the case may be, Gen Zen is a perfect representation as to the end destination and the end game of the resistance and the Church of Wokes ideology. When ideology cannot be challenged, when there is no freedom of thought or speech, when conformity and obedience to dogma is all that one is presented with, and this has been the only choice people have had for generations, when a populace has been marinated in woke social justice of communist inculcated and state-imposed atheism, when all avenues of spirituality have been either removed or co-opted by the state, when one no longer has a voice and there is no political outlet for dissent, well, all people are left with is disenfranchisement and the void of nihilistic meaninglessness. As Western values continue to collapse, the ideological contagion that has infected China's Generation Zen may spread and leave the people of the world not only disconnected, but disempowered. The future that woke politics is striving for can be observed today in the Gen Zen of China. Atomized, disenfranchised, apathetic, apolitical, disempowered, nihilistic, crushed under the boot heel of ideological conformity and dogmatic social justice. As Western values continue to collapse, the ideological contagion that has infected China's Generation Zen may spread and leave the people of the world not only disconnected, but disempowered. The future that woke politics is striving for can be observed today in the Gen Zen of China. Atomized, disenfranchised, apathetic, apolitical, disempowered, nihilistic, crushed under the boot heel of ideological conformity and dogmatic social justice. As Western values are continually jettisoned, as income inequality grows, as helplessness and hopelessness take hold of more and more people, as the economy leaves more and more behind, and as society becomes ever more divided, look to what begins to fill the vacuum left behind by the West's abandonment of religion and spirituality. That will be your guidebook, and that will be your roadmap onto where society is heading. And unless we can continue to have frank and open, as well as deep conversations, whether they get us anywhere or not, whether they bring us down or not, the conversation needs to be had. And the woke fanatics of the resistance that agitate for censorship, as well as the demagogues in Silicon Valley that are facilitating and accelerating said censorship, need to understand is this, and understand that freedom of speech is non-negotiable. Generation Zen is our future if we let it, and that is a very black pill to swallow.